live from Toronto, Canada, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Futurist Conference 2018. Brought to you by theCUBE. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is theCUBE's live coverage here in Toronto for the untraceable event here in the industry. It's called Blockchain Futurist. It's where all the industry elite are getting together here in Canada to talk about the future of blockchain, crypto, and everything. It's theCUBE's exclusive coverage as we continue 2018 kicking off event coverage with our, with our CUBE brand. But right now we got two great guests from Startup and they're called Quantum Exchange and Bank, Quant X Sphinx, Manny Agar, Executive Chairman, and John Willock, who's the CEO. Guys, welcome to the Thank Cube. You. So you guys got some hard news to talk about, we but do. you guys are doing an exchange model, bringing something really cool to the market, which we need to kind of get this figured out. Take a minute to explain what you guys are doing, problem you're solving, and then we'll get to the news. Absolutely, so, so I think you know, a lot of people are doing exchanges, you see them coming all the time, and most of them don't really have any specific differentiation or value add. We are not like that at all. We, we have spent our careers as part of most of the team in traditional financial services and we are coming from the securities exchange business to bring the learnings from NASDAQ, the learnings from the like of that sort to the crypto exchange space and to be able to facilitate not only a regulated exchange venue but also one that is institutional grade in terms of tools and the client experience as well as the trust factor with the platform itself. So that's really what we're trying to get done with the, with the quantum exchange that we're building right now. And how old is the company? How long have you been around? When did you guys start? How funded are you? What's happening there? So I'll refrain from discussing funding at this point, but I will say we've, uh, we've started this year. Um, I left the Toronto Stock Exchange specifically to pursue this in conjunction with Manny. We've been banning this idea around for the last couple of years and the market reached a stage of maturity and size that we said now is the time to get going and do it. And, so far, fanfare has been fantastic. Reactions from people in the crypto ecosystem, people in the securities ecosystem, um, has, has been equally positive. There's, yeah. there's a, a strong desire to see something like this come to market. We're very excited to be able to launch. Before we get to the news, Manny, I want to ask you a question. One of the things that we've seen is two types of behavior. The other guy's got to lose for me to win, and then, or we, both parties can win. We're seeing trends where people are taking a posture against regulators. Oh, they're evil, they're, they're causing all the problems. They kind of don't know what they're doing, we kind of, they're evolving, maturity levels are different based on countries. But where the success is happening, like uh, Gabriel in uh, with Bit, okay, there's collaboration. Because the regulators actually want to do a good job in most cases. <laughs> they just can't get yeah. there fast enough. This is the new model, this is what people are looking at. This is the kind of Absolutely. solution, a bridge between industry and the slow but yet want to change regulators. Yeah. Your thoughts? Very, very good point. Uh, the good news is we're all talking to each other. Um, I think there's dialogue at the moment, but it's not maybe as open as it should be, because yeah. it's still day one. Uh, what I bring to the community and have for the, since I got engaged in, in launching the first Bitcoin ATM in the world in Vancouver, part of that team, and uh, helping Anthony build the Bitcoin Alliance and Blockchain Association, the Block Forum, which we'll announce tomorrow, I worked for Barclays, I worked for Vodafone, I was involved in the Impesa project, and I could see and I understand what does it take for people to start using technologies. I think what everybody is hoping for is this golden moment, like when the first iPhone arrived on the scene. People queued around the block through the night to get hold of that first device. We haven't had that moment yet for blockchain yeah. and crypto. We've had the wild enthusiasm, which is all speculation as far as most of us are concerned, but maturity is coming, these technology, if blockchain and cryptocurrencies want to succeed, it needs to be another converging technology with what's already out there, the internet, your, your financial ecosystem and so yeah. forth. The, in my view, there will be a coming together, there will be new models all together, uh, incumbents will have to pick up the pace in terms of the, how they go about yeah. it, but where we see the opportunity for ourselves, for Quantix, yep. and the industry as a whole, is where the convergence takes place, the dialogue becomes more mature and open and transparent. Yep. Regulators become aligned. At the moment, we hear of a lot of jurisdictions announcing this, announcing that, but when you start investigating or assessing, yep. it's different flavors, different yep. cultures, different economies. Uh, there's the Commonwealth block, there's the North American block, there's the Asian block, Europe, 
is a whole different uh, ball. You know, I agree with you, and I want to just... So this is where it gets interesting. Yeah. And that's where we come into the game. Absolutely. Well, I, I agree with you. I just want to make a point. Uh, during the dot-com bubble, during yeah. that internet wave, yeah, there was some over-speculation, but at the end of the day, the forcing function of reality was the growth of the online users was growing every day. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the demand and the commerce dollars were still real. Now, certainly there was a, uh, exuberance, yeah, yeah. irrational in some cases, but it all ended up happening. I think here in this market, the forcing function is, it's the reality that there's demand, and there's money, oh, and there's big. impact. There yes. is money, we yes. now know that. Yes, there, this is coming. Yep. It's not like doomsday, well, it was fake. No, not no, really. Not, not quite. Yeah, no, we, we are still in the first inning of seeing what is actually coming out of all this. I think last year's price speculation run up obviously was set to, uh, to decline at some point, but there has been a long series of momentum coming out of that where people have realized that this is something much more important and significant than what it looked like three years ago, yep. perhaps. And a lot of that talent is now coming to this space, bringing the capital, bringing the know-how, us included, um, to deliver something for you know, the next generation of platforms, yeah. tools, and ecosystems to really grow this massively and bring it much more to the mainstream. And I think the idea of, of aligning with regulators to help them move faster, yes. you mentioned adopt technology, we're still in the phase of deploying operational infrastructure. Yep. You Absolutely. mentioned some of the things, the projects that you worked on, Vodafone, that's cellular, that's oh, yeah. towers, that's oh, infrastructure. Yeah. So I think we're still in this hybrid model of in parallel, capital formation, building co companies, and then just, we got to get the roads built. Right? Well, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and I understand the, the, the posture that a lot of people are taking around, we need to decentralize, we need to open this thing up. But at the end of the day, the consumer votes. You yeah. and I know if we don't have viewers, we don't have a channel. Uh, if we don't have users, people actually using the technology, not only investing, but actually yeah. using it, it ain't going to happen. Decentralized, centralized, or hybrid. And that's the, the, and, that, and that's the part that yeah. we need to open up. Well, let me ask you guys a question before we get to the news. It's exciting news you used to share. Yeah. How do you standardize something? Because one common thread of all these major inflection points, at least through the major cycles I've lived through, has been standards. But it's Absolutely. not going to be your grandfather's standards. So TCPIP was different. The OSI model is a different generation. The internet was different. Web web social is different. What may happen may be different. So, but you, standards play an important role. Yep. But no one has clear visibility yet what will be standardized, what should be standardized. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Well, that's where John comes Absolutely. in. He's lived the <laughs> world of standards <laughs> at NASDAQ and TMX and elsewhere. That's true. Now we need to bring it to this world. How do we scale operationally to get um, a cohesive exchange that can scale and deliver value? Where do the standards focus need to be? What should be the, the emphasis? Where's the light get shined on and where's the energy go to? I, I think you know you want to look at standards. Think about something like this ETF debate that's been going on. Huge speculation about whether or not that's coming. I think a lot of people who are looking at that ETF debate specifically don't actually understand some of the economics and the mechanisms behind the scenes. So for example, what is a fork? When you think about traditional securities, you've got corporate actions like a stock split or a dividend. A fork is an entirely different concept with entirely different results. Um, those are the sorts of things that need to be discussed, standardized, and, and brought to uh, an industry cohesion to be able to successfully deal with some of these events as the market progresses, and you know to bring some normalcy to, to some of this as well, especially if you want to bring institutions to the fray. And I think that comes to uh, one of the other initiatives we're working on, which is the industry body called Block Forum, which we're going to be discussing in a moment, um, that can really help be that driving hold on, hold on, voice this behind is news. So we got This is news. Yeah. You guys are I announcing, should... let's get to the news. Okay. You're announcing a couple things. Start with what you were just talking about. You guys are announcing a forum. Can you explain? Correct, correct. So uh, we're launching uh, officially to the remainder of the crowd here tomorrow, Block Forum, which is an industry association that will be especially uh, behind driving uh, you know, adult thinking behind all this, putting regulation into play, discussing commonalities around policy, around how to standardize, uh, and, and how to really make all this interoperable. And I think that's the key word. If you have individual pillars of you know, islands of activity, that's not going to be the same as having a cohesive global solution. And that's what we really want to drive. An exchange solution? Well, in our case as Quantex, absolutely. But an exchange and the services we can offer is one part of the whole puzzle. There's a whole series of interconnected affairs that have to work together. And that's what Block Forum is going to drive, is, is this, this assembly of different connected parties who are all working for the greater benefit Who's of the crypto ecosystem. Who's going to be involved in the uh, forum? Who, who is the stakeholders? Who can join? Is it a membership? Is it a 
It is, it, is a, it, is a, it is a membership. There will actually be a token that uh, will have very interesting uh, membership related tokenomics attached which we could disclose at a later date. Um, and that, uh, that economic alignment between the parties who are staking effectively uh, their interests in the certain topics that they want to back or the certain efforts uh, will be a completely unique model compared to what we've seen in the industry today where generally speaking, um, you know, it, it is a committee who drives something on behalf of members. This is really fundamental for all members, democratically from individuals all the way up to institutions to be able to participate and voice so their So you'll interests. see governments as members? Yes, yes you'll absolutely. You'll see industry leading uh, stakeholders and practitioners. Exactly. The whole idea of the body is not to create new policy or reinvent the wheel. We're getting policy, we're, we're receiving regulation. It's how do we put this in practice? Yeah. Where are the success stories? How can we show the industry as a whole, governments across jurisdictions to align around best practice? So a melting pot of, of people yes. to get a conversation right. going, to right. start shaping an agenda or, yet, or just to yeah. start talking? So we're talking to governments at premier and cabinet level. We're talking to boardrooms of banks. We're talking to, think of your top 40 leaders in blockchain and crypto. We're talking to all of them yep. and engaging with them. The vision of the outcome that you and, and can envision in your mind, what is that outcome for this group? What do you hope to accomplish? What is the end result if you can kind of assume things go in a good way, what happens? I think this is a unifying voice for leadership in the industry to, to discuss with the outside, outside of crypto world that is, um, and, and, and really bridge that gap between those who are within and understand natively, and those who need to be brought in uh, to be able to interact with this and, and really grow all and of this industry. And promote the role models, the and success story. Exactly that, exactly that, to, to you know, to, to bring the best to the front um, and, and really show that there is actually serious opportunity, serious business. This is not just a series of hackers or whatever nefarious activities people casually may think that the blockchain industry is. This is something very serious and very real and, and we want to be the voice for that. Awesome, and you guys have some other news uh, on the fundraising front. Industry you first. You guys are raising Correct. some money, Correct. you're doing a private sale. Correct. Can you share as much as you can? It's accredited investors, so I think you can promote it. I, I, I will say with, uh, with a caveat, as you say, it's accredited investors only and uh, we have not completed our discussions with our legal counsel. Having said that, uh, we are taking the model of a traditional securities exchange membership, seats on an exchange which can be purchased, which have rights attached, which are a title asset separately from equity of the exchange, for example, separately from a, a utility token as you would have seen with many other exchanges. This is something that we feel is a very unique model. Um, we, we are very excited to be able to launch this and, and come to market first with this concept, which again, is blending the best of the old and the new. We're taking tokenization, we're taking uh, concepts that have existed in the previous markets and previous worlds uh, and blending them together for something that is somewhat unique and, and wholly new in this application. Well, I hope you guys raise a lot of money. We need more uh, harmony between regulators and government entities to bring the whole world together. And certainly from a money-making standpoint, yep. the liquidity that exchanges can provide as the world starts to understand where the groove swing is and where those swim lanes are, especially with Absolutely. security tokens. You bet, you bet. And, and, and the back. success here is going to be measured in ability to scale sustainably. Yes. And we yeah. want to demonstrate yeah. that with this model. We need some uh, leadership there, so good luck. Yeah. Thank Best you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank we you. are here live in uh, Toronto, Canada for the Blockchain Futurist Conference. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Distracting the signal noise, talking to the most important people, the hottest stories, here the most colorful people, people traveling around the world sharing that insights with you. Stay with us for more day coverage here. Our first day of two day coverage of Blockchain Futurist. We'll be right back after this short break. Thanks.